Head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices and you can sign up for product alerts. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today it's all about the doodle. You're going to be cooperatively drawing just shapes and trying to get people to guess what you've all collectively drawn together. And you're going to be drawing your own conclusions as to what you think everyone else drew for you, but you're also going to be drawing your own conclusions. Get it? This is from Social Sloth Games. It's called Draw Your Own Conclusions. It's a sort of a party drawing game for three to eight players. Let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. In Draw Your Own Conclusions, you're going to be cooperatively working with others to try to get someone to guess a specific drawing, in this case an activity. But the trick is, you're only going to have a shape that you can draw. One of these nine shapes you're going to be dealt, and that's the only thing that you can draw when it becomes your turn to try to draw onto the board. Now each player will get their own marker of their own color, and it does have a nice eraser on the top as well. How this works is each player is going to get a board. They're going to write the name of the player to the player to their right. Basically going to be the last player in clockwise order. And then you're going to draw a card and write the category here. Then a die is going to be rolled and everybody that has one of these, because everyone will have a board, uh, they're going to secretly write in, in this case the number three was rolled, so everybody that has a board and a card is going to write whatever this number three is in the answer. In this case it is Jeep. So we would go something like this. So now what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to draw a shape and then I'm going to pass this to the left, which means I'll get another board, uh, you know, of somebody else's and I'll be continuing to draw, but I'm only going to draw one shape. Let's say the shape I was given was a circle. So here I am going to draw and now you can draw only your shape. That's all you can draw, but you can draw up to five of them. So maybe with my circles, I drew these two, thinking they're wheels, it's gonna be a Jeep going up the hill. Maybe this is like a sun or something like that. So I would then pass this to the next player to my left, which means I would get somebody else's board and I would still need to draw this shape on the new one that I had gotten. But let's continue with this one. Let's say it got past the next player and the next player has this shape. Now let's say they put the X's here to hopefully make it look like wheels because they're on the same page as me. And then maybe over here they actually did think it was a sun. Maybe they put a bunch of like X's like sort of sunlight coming off of that. And let's say it got passed to the next player and they had to draw a squiggly line. So maybe they drew this for sort of the hill, maybe this for the, just to let it see it's, it's you know, a big structure. And maybe they did this for like steam coming out of like a tailpipe. Let's say it got past the next player and that player has to draw a square. And maybe they drew one, two, three, four squares like that. Now let's say it got back to Cat. Now again, everyone at this point, whoever is, it will have the board of their name. They're not going to flip this. Now I should mention that when these players, when each of the other players get the board, they'll be able to flip and go, oh, okay, this is what I'm drawing here. They'll, they'll know what they're trying to draw. Uh, but when it gets to the guesser, they do not get to look. That's what this means. So when you have the board of your, with your name on it, you're going to try to guess what this is. And also keep in mind that each of the shapes normally would be a different color with, because each player would have a different marker, but I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what it might look like. Now each player has three of these star tokens. And so essentially they're going to do, they're going to guess. Maybe they say wagon and everyone says no. Well, then they flip this over. Then they get to point to any one shape and they get to ask what it is. So maybe they say, uh, this circle here, what is this? And maybe someone says, it's a sun. And then they get to guess again. Maybe they say caravan, and they say no, then they flip this over. And they say this squiggly line, what is this? And maybe someone says, it's a mountain. And someone goes, oh, Jeep. And then yes, they get it. If not, they would have just lost their last clue and they don't get it. But this is part of the scoring that I'll go over in just a moment. So that's generally how it works. Uh, let's go through a couple of these to show you, see if you can play along and guess what it might be. Now here is one that was drawn for me. This was in a four player game. There's just three different types of shapes here. It was given back to me. It is an activity. I'll give you a second to look at this. Go ahead, pause the video here, look at this and see if you can figure it out and give us a guess. Okay, I'm just gonna assume you got it wrong. <laughs> Let's give you a clue. Let's say you pointed to this and I say score. Now, pause the video and think about that and guess what activity this is. Okay. You probably have gotten it, but if you didn't, let's say you pointed to this and said, what is this shape? And that player says, alley. 
So go ahead and pause and think about it. Okay, did you guess? Hopefully you got that this activity was bowling. Now let's check this out as a five player game. Uh, and what would you guess this is? Go ahead and pause the video. Think about it and give yourself a guess. Just go ahead and shout it. All right, let's just assume you got it wrong. Uh, in the original game that we played this in, the player guessed bird and we said no. Then they pointed to the uh, squiggly line on the left, the blue one there, and the player said tree. And I bet you could guess this one now, but let's just pretend you got it wrong just in case. And let's say you pointed at those little purple X's next to the tree, and a player said, um, drilling. And so what's your guess? It actually was a woodpecker. Okay, let's try one more. Uh, here's one, pause the video and think of what this might be. Okay, let's assume you got it wrong. Let's say you pointed to the purple structure to the right, and you asked what that was, and that player said, couch. Okay, let's assume you still got it wrong. And over by those two uh, green squares on the left side, there's another purple structure there. And you asked what that was. And the player, let's just say they say rest. Okay, what do you think? I'm about to reveal it now. What do you think this is? It was a recliner. Now, after everyone has played and guessed, uh, you optionally can keep score, and this gives you a certain amount of score depending on how many tokens. Like, if any player has no tokens, then you need more practice, but if all players have all three tokens, then you're world famous, and so on and so forth, and that's a way to score if you care to do so. And that's pretty much how you play. Draw your own conclusions. All right, well, there's draw your own conclusions. Uh, let's talk about first what I liked about the game. First of all, it's very approachable. The rule set's very simple. Just, the rules are simply on just one page, double-sided with, and you know, big text and pictures and stuff. So very easy to teach. This is sort of a mass market style game where anybody could pick this game up and learn it very quickly. Uh, and you don't have to be a good drawer in this game. Now, I'm typically terrible at drawing games. I usually don't like them because of that. Like if I draw any animal, they all look the same. I mean, I am like the worst drawer. So usually I only like drawing games if like the worst you draw, like the better the game is, <laughs> like telestrations and things like that. Uh, but you don't have to be a good drawer in this game because you're just drawing a specific shape and you're just trying to figure out where to put that. So it's a different twist on this genre. Uh, I like that you're sort of working with others and their shapes. You know, you're getting past, you know, the, the, the board and you're like, oh, look what's drawn. Now, how can I add my shapes to what everyone else was thinking? And you're trying to figure out what were they thinking and trying to add to that. So there's a lot of sort of group think that goes on, but you're passing multiples of these as the game goes on. So you're working with the same people, but in sort of different orders where you have a little bit more or less information depending on when that comes around. It's interesting to sort of work with others and try to figure out what is this? You're trying to figure out what they're drawing so that you can draw so the next person hopefully can put the collectively the whole picture together and figure out how to, you know, correctly or in a good way add to that that's going to allow the person guessing to be able to guess it. Uh, and now when you get to that guessing, uh, my favorite part is actually when people get it wrong because often you won't get it right on your first uh, you know, your first guess. And my favorite part of this game is when you're giving or getting the clues, because you're giving a one word clue if they get it wrong, and they point to one shape and, and that person has to say what that is, but it's one word, and so sometimes you can be a little clever as to what that is, how detailed or, or you know, I've seen it where it's like, it really makes a difference as to what clue you give them. What's the single word you're gonna give them what that really was? or is, and that's kind of fun. And then when you get the clues, you're like, oh, now what could this be? And you have sort of like two extra guesses that you can try for. Uh, and it's fun to kind of get a little bit more information, a little bit more information. And even at times when you don't get it, you know, they, they actually go off the record and kind of give you a little bit more hints one at a time until you finally probably get it. Uh, but it's, that's the best part of this game is kind of giving the clues. Of course, working together and trying to figure out what everyone was thinking. And then after the fact, the other great part is, you know, hearing why people drew what they drew and they're like, what do you mean? How is this this? Well, when I got it, it only had these and I thought it was this, so I drew this. And they're like, no, it was this. You know, and like there's the, the conversations after the fact are really also where the fun of the game lies, along with kind of like getting the clues. Uh, now, granted, if you if you if your team sort of drew it well and they guess it, sure, that's still fun. There's high fives and things like that. But for me, it's actually the most fun when you don't get it, you get the clues and people explain what it is and you all laugh. Because it is a party game and there is scoring, uh, but 
you know, it's a party game. Who cares, right? Uh, so that's, you know, draw your own conclusions. Anything I didn't like about it. The, the game is listed for three to eight players. Uh, and I would say it's definitely best with five or more. Now, there is sort of a variant for three players. Uh, it's not in the rules itself, but I spoke to the publisher about this, where each player will have two shapes to draw. Uh, and I've actually also used this variant with four players. So uh, where you actually draw two shapes, because then there's enough going on that like give you a good chance of getting it correctly. Uh, but I still think it's best with five or more. So that's what I think about draw your own conclusions. And from this review, you should be able to draw your own conclusion if this one's for you. This has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games by helping you find the next one you'll love. Did you miss the Game Topper 2.0 Kickstarter? Have no fear. It's not too late to get in on the ultimate gaming accessory. Convert your table into a high quality gaming table with a fully portable game topper system and take advantage of some of the best three millimeter premium gaming mats in the industry. New styles, new sizes, and new accessories can be yours. Upgrade every game you play by late backing now at GameToppersLLC.com.